Hello everyone, I am Prepper Princess, the author of Living on Almost Nothing. If you are interested in purchasing my book, I will go ahead and leave a link in the description box below. I am not wearing any pants, just so you know. Okay. All right, so today we're going to talk, talk about five things that, are, that can make you rich, all right? The first one is become and stay debt-free and do it as long as possible. There's no such thing as good debt. The debt, what is it? The debtor is slave to the lender. So stay out of debt. I have been debt free since the age of early 20s. I, I don't know the exact year, but for more than 20 years, um, I have become a millionaire and that is the way to wealth. Become and stay debt free. If you don't know how, there are a million different YouTube channels out here that will show you how to reduce your expenses, increase your income, including this channel, uh, which has plenty of investments, uh, uh, videos on investments and passive income. So go ahead and take a look. Just type in Prepper Princess Passive Income, Prepper Princess Reduce Your Expenses, that type of thing. Number two, Live on less than you make and invest as much as possible. So this actually means live on much less than you make and invest as much as possible. That does Notice that that does not say save as much as possible. You are not going to become rich by saving your money. Uh, right now we have some pretty inflated interest rates, so you're going to get a pretty good rate of return on your savings account, but the S&P has a historical average of 10%, and the best type of interest rate you're gonna get right now on any savings is gonna be around three and a half to 4%. So you need to invest. If you are afraid of investing, um, I have a financial advisor who I've made plenty of videos with. Again, you can type in Prepper Princess Financial Advisor um, if you don't understand investing, but investing is something that you simply have to do. Number three is more of a recommendation, it's not a requirement, but it is to create happiness surrounding a low cost lifestyle and pay no attention to the Joneses. We all see that family down the street with the white picket fence who just bought their fourth new car this year, um, but what you don't see is their diminished or negative bank balance, their credit card debt, their high mortgage that they've taken out 20 HELOCs out on, home equity line of credits on their house in order to afford that car so that they can impress you. Take great pride in your old car, take care of it, keep it looking brand new, and pretty soon you're gonna have a classic that is worth even more than their brand new car. For hobbies, make sure that you keep your hobbies as low cost as possible. You do not, I, I, you know, going out and partying is not a thing that technically should be done all the time, maybe once in a while, but um, happiness can be single, uh, single purchases that last a long time. Um, this can be anything from e-bikes that you can ride on dirt trails to a bicycle that you can go on bike rides with to balls and frisbees and horseshoes and bocce and that other one that I can't think of the name. It has the little round things with the ball and then you put the ball through the little hoop that's on the ground. Crochet. Cro that's not it. Crambe. Cro if you all think of the name croquet, croquet, ha ha, there we go, croquet, I got it. Okay, so I am all for one-time purchases that you can use over and over and over again. Metal detecting is a really great hobby. It's a lot of fun for a lot of people, and that's actually a productive hobby. If you Maybe you find gold or silver or jewelry, and you can go and sell those on Craigslist, eBay, take them to pawn shops or whatever. That's something that you might be able to do. Um, and I'm not talking about buying a boat that you can use over and over and over again. You know, if you only use your boat a couple of times a year, you have to buy a truck in order to tow it, which I do not recommend. So I would say just rent a boat whenever you need it. 
So create happiness surrounding a low cost lifestyle. Um, that's also something where I recommend switching your cell phone service to Mint Mobile. The link is down in the description. It's $15 a month and it uses the T-Mobile network, I believe. I always get it confused. It's T-Mobile, Verizon. I, I can't seem to get it right even when I look it up and write it down. But uses a really high end network, but it's a, like a lot cheaper. Ditch the cable, get a Roku box or a, for $25 or a smart TV, figure out how to use the apps and then use them to your full advantage. You'll never, you'll wonder why you ever had cable in the first place. Uh, learn how to hang your laundry, only do full loads, uh, add water to your soap and shampoo or even your mouthwash, uh, buy the cheapest toothpaste because they all have the same ingredients just with different flavors, just a whole bunch of different things. You don't have to go shopping for clothes all the time unless your kids are in having those growth spurts, but you as a parent do not need to go clothes shopping. You don't need to get your nails done, your hair done. It is not a necessity. We've been on this earth for hundreds of thousands of years and I can't really imagine Cro-Magnon Man setting up a nail and hair salon, but they managed to survive somehow, so it's simply not a necessity. Realize, this is also an opinion, um, a suggestion, realize young that nobody is coming to rescue you and you are responsible for your own destiny. We live in a society of irresponsibility. It's not my fault, it's their fault. Um, it's not my fault that I spilled my coffee on myself, it's their fault for not putting the lid on tight enough. It's not my fault that I ran into the stop sign, it's their fault because the stop sign wasn't bright enough. It's not my fault that I opened this package and I'm trying to return it six months later without a receipt. It's your fault for, I don't know why it's your fault. It's your fault for not providing better customer service and a return policy that's indefinite. So it's your fault. We absolutely live in a society of irresponsibility. And I did a survey on my channel one time and it showed that something like 67% of people wish that they saved and invested more money throughout their lifetime. 67% wish that they did that. So when you are an older person looking back on your life, you're like, God, I should have saved more. The guilt is going to drive you crazy. You're going to have resentment towards yourself for spending recklessly, irresponsibly, unnecessarily. It is something that happens and it's most people. Most people live paycheck to paycheck. Most people do not have any retirement savings at all, and the ones that do have very, very little, which is not enough to retire on, let alone live a comfortable life after retirement. So if you wanna to work to the age of 72, um, full time, all the time, and keep going there afterwards, good for you. Good for you. Some of us simply don't want to do that. And it is much easier to work two or three jobs in your youth than it is when you're 80 years old and you are just too darn tired. But a lot of people nowadays have to do that because they thought that the social system was going to take care of them in their old age. The average social security check is around average is around $1,400, but most people that I've ever talked to receive much, much less. And if you have no retirement savings, you are living on $1,400 a month. In today's dollars, that's not going to get you very far. You might have to uh, swallow your pride and you'll end up in the food bank line if you don't start saving and investing at a really young age. And the younger you start, the easier it's going to be as you age. And the last one is realize that 100% of rich people invest money. How many multimillionaires have you met, not including ones like that created some outstanding company like Jeff Bezos, Mark Zuckerberg, or Elon Musk? Those are multi-billionaires that are one in a billion people. Literally, one in a one in two billion people. There's three of them and 7.7 .7 billion people. So they're a one in three billion shot. You're not gonna. You're more than likely not going to become a billionaire. And if you are, uh, I don't know why you would be wasting time watching this channel when you're so busy creating something huge for the world. 
Time travel, I am waiting for you to come out. So if one of you are watching this and you create time travel, prepperprincess2 at gmail.com. Uh, <clears throat> oh, God, I just... <clears throat> I'm sorry. <clears throat> oh, my gosh. <clears throat> Whew. But you will realize that 100% of rich people are investors. And that doesn't always mean the stock market. I know somebody who's super wealthy and they invest in baseball cards, which is the weirdest thing. I know another person who is super in, uh, wealthy, they invest in farms and farmland. Uh, but typically real estate and stocks are the way that most people invest. And you'll notice that most millionaires or multimillionaires are people that invested their money. That's 99.999% of the people. You are not going to save your way to millionaire status. You are not going to save your way to wealth. You are not going to save your way there. And cutting costs on your cell phone and your cable package um, and your food bill is not doing you any good if you're just saving that money to spend it on something else. Save that money and spend it on assets that are going to make you money over time. The S&P 500 has gained 10% a year on average over the last 100 years. And while we may be in a recession, it is more than likely going to continue to do that as it always has. So everybody, that is what I've got for you today. Set your mindset to the task at hand. And once you develop these habits, these habits are really easy to implement into your life. Um, and then your life becomes totally stress-free and much easier to do. And you have the confidence that you are going to be able to retire and keep an amazing standard of living. All right, folks, that's what I've got for you today. Do what you can with what you've got. Prepper Princess out. What? You were on the verge of saying something. What is it? Her? Her? What? Oh! Oh, okay. Well, um, I haven't heard of that... Um, political party, but, um, I have heard that there is, oh, okay. yeah, no, I know they're totally boring, totally boring political party. I know. But, um, have you heard of, oh, have you, have you heard of them? How about you? No. Um, yes. Hey, Nala, do you think, oh, oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. So, um, Rocky, tell me, um, if you were going to fix the climate, how would you go about doing that? Oh, you just, you'd just give up on it? Oh, okay, yeah, we all have. Yeah, we're all done with all that whole climate thing, fixing the world, cleaning the oceans, yeah, let's just chill out and take a nap about it. And you, Nala, what would you, oh, you would climb every mountain. Okay. Okay. You would climb every mountain. No, you wouldn't. What would you do? You would just ask somebody else and just go look at the other countries and tell them to fix it. Okay. Well, that's a good idea. Yeah, I know. I know. Oh, what? What? Ha, 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 ha.